Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this exciting Sunday. A uh, couple announcements that aren't in the bulletin. Um, we have a, an additional prayer request from Jan Teepee. A friend of hers, daughter, has recently been diagnosed with a rare aggressive cancer, so prayers for them. Also, next Sunday is um, the next pub theology at Westside Brewery, so if you can make that. And then today, after the service, um, reminder that we're all walking down the street to Westside Brewery, so I hope everyone can come with us.
All right, thank you. Welcome, everybody. On behalf of the Cincinnati Caledonian Pipes and Drums, I want to thank you all for having us out today for your cooking of the tartan. And uh, to get you guys started, and give you a little brief history on um, what the Kirk and the Tartan is. Uh, first, it's important, important to note that back in the old days, the Highlands were ruled by a clan system. And a clan system was any group of people that got together and swore uh, allegiance to each other for protection and uh, just working together as a group. So it was a, the family. Now, it usually ended up being as a part of a, uh, a village. Then you had clan chiefs, and then they would, women would not make the tartans, and they wear those tartans. So, our story starts way back after the Battle of Clarden. The uh, Scots were defeated by the British in a sleet storm, and after that defeat, a law was passed that outlawed the wearing of the tartan, the playing the bagpipes, which some people were happy about, but, uh, <laughs> but the Scots didn't like this at all. So, it was said that what the Scots would do in the church services, as they were defiant Scots, they would hide a little piece of the tartan on the body, and at a certain point in the service, would touch that tartan as an act of defiance. Now, it wasn't until 1941 in, uh, in New York, in Washington, D.C., I mean, that the uh, Reverend Peter Marshall started the... Uh, cooking of the tartan service as we have it today. And then he started this whole service where you present the tartans in the Americas and uh, celebrate that Scottish heritage. So, as we are gathered here today freely to celebrate our tartans, to celebrate our heritage, no matter what heritage you come from, we all come together as a group here and celebrate those individual heritages. We do this calling of the clans. And that was when the Scots people would come together and announce that their group was here and they're all coming together to work as one. So I'm gonna go through a list of clans. If you hear your name or a name that you're associated with through a friend or a family, please stand up. The last clan I'll call is Clan Beer, children of God, family of God. Anderson, Armstrong, Arthur, Brenneman, Barclay, Boyd, Brody, Bryson, Bruce, Buchanan, Burnett, Burns, Cameron, Campbell, Carmichael, Carnegie, Carhart, Chatton, Chisholm, Coldrain, Calhoun, Colville, Craig, Cummings, Cunningham, Davison, Dewar, Dickey, Drummond, Dunbar, Dunas, Drury, Elliot, Erkstein, Farkerson, Douglas, Douglas, Ferguson, Forbes, Forsyth, Fraser, Gordon, Graham, Grant, Gregor, Gunn, Gerthy, Haig, Hamilton, Hay, Hendrick, Henderson, Home, Hume, Hope, Hunter, Irvine, Johnstone, Jones, Keith, Kennedy, Care, Kincaid, Lamont, Lennox, Leslie, Lindsay, Lockhart, Lloyd, McAllister, McBean, McDaniel, McDonald, McDonald, McDougall, McDougall, McIntyre, McGregor, McKay, McKenzie, McKinnon, McIntosh, McLaren, McLee, or Livingstone, McLean, McLennan, McLeod, McMillan, McNobb, McNeil, McPhail, McPherson, McTavish, McThomas, McGill, Malcolm, 
Ma, Matheson, Maxwell, Menzies, Moffat, Montgomery, Morrison, Monroe, Murray, Napier, Nesbitt, Nicholson, Ogilvy, Primrose, Ramsey, Riddle, Robertson, Rollo, Ross, Rose, Robin, Scott, Semphill, Shaw, Sinclair, Smith, Sterling, Stewart, Sutherland, Trotter, Urquhart, Wallace, Wemis, and Wood, and finally, Clandia. We will now do the blessing of the Tartan. Present Tartans. On behalf of all clans represented here, we raise these tartans before Almighty God in gratitude for our heritage and pray for God's blessing on God's servant people in all lands. We proclaim that we are all united in the covenant of Jesus Christ, for there is but one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of us all. Let us call upon the one who knows every thread in the fabric of our lives. Let us call upon the one who embroiders new designs who weaves new textiles with patience and delight. Let us call upon the one who patches worn place, places with compassion. We are the tapestry of God, each strand important to the pattern, each frayed end worth the mending every thread a treasure. Let us worship our God.
You may be seated. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God. We confess our sins to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, compassionate God of life, your kindly pardon give for our careless talk, our broken oath, our empty speech, for all that we have left undone, for all that we have done amiss. As we receive the word and acknowledge your forgiveness and shield us and circle us each day and each night, uphold us, be our treasure, our triumph everlasting, strong Son of God, most high. Hear us now as we confess in silence. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. May the God of mercy, who forgives you all our sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Friends, you may be seated. Well, this is fun, isn't it? I'm loving this. First of all, I just want to say thank you to the Caledonian Pipes and Drums and the uh, Flag Auxiliary for being here. You guys are amazing. That was just great and looking forward to more later in the service. Um, I've known Robert Reed now for a couple of years, actually about two or three years. Where are you, Robert? There you go, over there. And um, actually, I first met him. He played bagpipes at my birthday party a few years ago. And it was so fun. Like, we were just kind of having the party, and then all of a sudden, Robert just comes right into the front door playing bagpipes, and everybody in the house just stopped and loved it. And it was, it was a great night. So anyway, great person. In a minute, Robert's actually going to be doing the children's moment. So um, any kids that want to come up here for the children's moment, Robert's fantastic. You'll love what he has to say. So with that, um, we are at a, uh, and that's part of our service where we go into our time of prayer. Uh, it's a, um, a, what we call pastoral prayers or congregational prayers. But one of the things that we share almost every week is that God is always praying with us and in us. So take a deep breath. It's a kirking of the tartan service, but it is a worship service where we can pause and reflect and catch up with ourselves and know that the divine presence, that prayer that we can never hear but we can experience, resides within each and every one of us here. That's good news. And so as we go into time of prayer, lifting people up, and actually our first person that we're going to be praying for, that we've been praying for for the past few weeks is here, Donna. So it's so good to have you back in worship. So um, let's join our hearts together and pray, friends. God, as we come into this moment, knowing that you are with us, you're a part of us, as we're reminded throughout Scripture, and even in our Celtic Christian mothers and fathers of old would remind us that Christ is all and in all. And so as we come into this time of prayer, knowing that you are praying with us because you are a part of us. God, we thank you for Donna. 
We thank you that she's here today and still recovering. Lord, we thank you for the gift of who she is. We continue to pray for Pat Upton and for Ruth Mayo's brother, Jimmy. And God, we pray for Diane Reinshauser. I, I thank you for uh, the visit at her house earlier in this week and then at the hospital. We pray for her as she continues her journey of uh, cancer treatment over the next several weeks. Pray for Robin, for Chris, for Barb. Pray for Sandy and Wendy's friend, Jen. Pray for Lois. God, we continue to pray for the Ritchie family. We thank you for John, his grandson, being here again with us today. Pray for Sandy's neighbor, Ken. And pray for Kathy Cooper. And we pray for uh, all the folks that are on our minds and our hearts. God, we pray for the request that Jan Tepe had and for her friend. And God, as we come into this moment today and we know that the world around us, there's so much going on. We pray for Palestine and for Israel and for Iran. We pray for them all, God. God, we pray that in the midst of the violence in that region, that folks can slow down and remember that they are all made in the image of God. Pray for that for Ukraine and Russia, and for all the conflicts in the world. And God, we're reminded, as you repeat often to us, violence begets violence. We pray that we as a church, Westwood First, part of the larger church as well, can be people that can stand for peace, for shalom, for justice, for reconciliation. We continue to pray for our presbytery, we pray for the Peace USA, and we pray for all churches and all faith communities. And God, again, we thank you that you have called us all together. As Robert said, we are one clan, the human clan. We pray that we can continue to come together. We pray a blessing upon this congregation as well as this community of Westwood. And we thank you also that you came to us and gave us words when our words fail us that Jesus shared with us that we say now, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And friends, before we uh, sing a hymn, I forgot that we have spoken prayers that we want to do during our time of prayer. So we're going to pray a little bit more. And uh, if you have a, somebody that you want to lift up, um, we'll give you time and a moment of silence to lift those folks up. Um, I don't want to lose that this morning because I think that's an important part of our worship service together. Guys, we come back into prayer, again, being reminded that we're constantly in prayer, whether we recognize it or not, because you reside within us and around us. We pray for folks now that are in our hearts that do rise to the place where we can voice them. And so we want to lift them up to you now. Mackenzie, Brennan, God, we know you hear our prayers because you're praying them with us. And as it says in Scripture that prayers rise up, and they also go deep down within who we are. As it says in the psalm, deep calls into deep. God, I thank you so much for this congregation this morning together. What a gift. We pray for all these people. We know that you hear our prayers. Thanks be to you, God. Amen. Please stand for our hymn. Or no.
Oh, the children, oh my goodness, I forgot about that. The children's moment, yes. Come on, Robert. Wait, I'm just all over the place this morning, aren't I? We do. And Robert, they've got kilts on. Oh, it's not as quite as loud. <laughs> Come on up here. We're here, all here today at the Kirking of the Tartan. That's Kirk is the Scottish word for church. And of course, we're all wearing the Tartans. So I figured I'd do a quick talk about what the Tartan is, what it represents, okay? So many, many years ago, um, men didn't wear pants. They hadn't invented pants yet. So what they take is this big piece of material and wrap it around the waist, right? And that was the kilt. So the ladies had to make this material. So they would weave a big bolt of material with different colors and was all browns and greens. It was camouflage. So the kilts were the original camouflage. So the men would wrap the tartan around their bodies and over the shoulder and go hunting. It would camouflage them in the woods. But as I said, each village was a clan, a group of people. So they all had that same pattern on. So if someone would see me, it's Mackenzie. So oh, he must be from the Mackenzie clan. So they start identifying each village or clan group to that pattern. And it became very popular to have those patterns and tartans. So that's where the kilt came from. In interesting. I'll do one more thing. This, this gets all the kids interested is, there's a little thing here in my sock. It's called a skin do, which means little black knife. Okay? A little weapon. This was the original concealed carry. When the <laughs> British <laughs> outlawed weapons, the Scots would hide a knife down the sock. Concealed carry, right? If you're around friends, you pop the knife out to let them know you have a weapon and you're not going to stick them in their kidney later on that evening. <laughs> so, good? All right, I'll hand it back over to you guys. Bless to me, O oh God, each thing mine eyes see. Bless to me, O oh God, each sound mine ears hear. Bless to me, O oh God, each odor that goes to my nostrils. Bless to me, O oh God, each taste that goes to my lips. Each note that goes to my song, each ray that guides my way, each thing that I pursue, each lore that tempts my will, the zeal that seeks my living soul, the three that seek my heart, the zeal that seeks my living soul, the three that seek my heart. And one other is, I am a hole in a flute that the Christ's breath moves through from Habiz. Our Old Testament reading today is from Psalm 4, verses 1 through 8. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? Selah, but know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Salah. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. This is the word of the Lord. Be well, before we do the uh, New Testament lesson, um, Robert, I got to talk to you about the uh, children's moment here. Now, you'd think that I'd be talking about the knife, you know, because, you know, although I do have one in my sock as well. Um, but no. You made a reference to pants, and I was kind of surprised by that because most of my friends in the 
England and Scotland would say, you never use the word pants. We assume that everybody's wearing pants because that's your underpants. <laughs> so they used to get, make fun of me a lot and saying, why do you keep on saying pants? Of course you've got pants on. It's trousers, correct? Am I correct? Okay, all right. All right, just had to get that clarification out there. So as we go into the gospel lesson, our gospel lesson is actually a, a John 17, 6 through 19. But it's, a, it's an amazing passage, and it's one we're actually breaking away a little bit from the lectionary this morning because I felt like as we're coming together this morning, you know, kirking of the tartans, calling of the clans, and being reminded that we're one clan, the human clan, that this passage fits with what we're talking about this morning. So here are these words from John 17, 6 through 19. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that scripture might be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that you may have known, so that you so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. And as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Mm. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. You know, as I said at the beginning of the prayers, I mean, this has been a fun morning. I mean, we've been looking forward to this morning for a while, haven't we? I mean, it's one of those um, moments in a worship service that when we kind of broached the idea, it kind of took a life of its own. And one of the things uh, I shared with Robert when he walked in, just to say, Robert, I'm so glad that you're here in this space because, again, as we've shared some time together, just to be able to be here and to share this moment. And I think as we are sitting here, um, we're just like in this presence, this moment, and being able to share it with one another is a gift, right? It's a gift to be here together. No matter if this is your first time here in, this, in Westwood First or you've been here for generations, each moment is a gift, and this is truly a gift. There's one person, though, that I wish was here this morning, um, but he couldn't be here because he's been dead for about 20 or 30 years, and that's my grandfather. My love for my Scottish heritage came from my maternal grandfather, my peepaw. He loved all things Scottish. And I remember sitting in his den growing up, and he was kind of the Norman Rockwell grandfather. He had his cardigan on, had a pipe, and he had all these books filled with history. I remember when I was a kid, he signed me up to be a junior member of the American Clan Gregor Society. I had no idea what that was, but I'm still a member, so I have a few more things I know about it now. But being part of that clan. Now, people had never made it to Scotland, although at his funeral, it was a uh, foggy, misty morning at the cemetery and we had a piper coming up over the hill playing Amazing Grace and it was a beautiful moment. But he never made it to Scotland. But his stories of our ancestors, especially Rob Roy, always captured my imagination. When I played bagpipes in our high school marching band, people would always come and listen to watch. 
He'd take me to Highland Games in North Carolina and Tennessee. And when I was in college, I became Presbyterian, breaking from my Baptist upbringing. And my peepaw was so proud. He was like, Presbyterians, they came out of the Church of Scotland. I'm so excited. I've been to Scotland now quite a few times, and every time I'm there, I think of my peepaw, and I think of him experiencing it with me. And even this morning on the drive here, I was thinking of him and feeling that sense of shared presence through the mystery of Christ with him, knowing that his spirit, along with our spirit and God's spirit, are all here together. One thing about my peepaw, he believed in me. There was a deep sense of unity. Now, obviously, there was quite a bit of age difference. He had a different culture, was raised differently, had different thoughts, different opinions. But yet, I always felt connected to him, still do, even after him being gone physically for quite a few years. When I was growing up, I spent quite a bit of time with him. We worked on a lot of projects at his house and on his land. As we read today's text in John, and again, I love the book of John. You know, John is an interesting um, uh, a book, and, and as we've said before, I mean, my, my last name is Jones, and, and Jones literally is a Welsh name, meaning son of John. So I love that passage, but the thing that I love about the book of John even more is that he constantly refers to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. There's a special connection there. Now, we know that uh, in this text that we read this morning, there's a lot about trust, of working together, of striving towards friendship, towards unity. It's filled with Jesus' last prayers found in the Gospel of John. These passages, these words had to be important to Jesus, and I think it has great meaning for us a couple of thousand years later. This passage has so much to say about being one, being unified. Our unity starts, though, with an understanding that all is from God. God is in all things, in all people. My hope is that as you're sitting here and you're looking around at the people around you, maybe people that you've known for forever, that when you look at them, you see the image of God because we are all made in God's image. We may look different. We may even be dressing different this morning. But yet, we're still the image of God. God has made God's dwelling in us, with us, and all around us. When you read the prayer of St. Patrick, you get that sense of Christ above, below, to my side, to my other side, inside, all around. And this God is ever expanding around us, evolving even as we grow beyond ourselves. In that space, we begin to understand what our call means to be disciples. Or, as Jesus says in this passage later, I no longer call you disciples, but I call you friends. And then we are called to, to live in this presence of Christ, in the Spirit of God. And actually, in that passage, it's so beautiful how it talks about, I am in you, and you are in me, and I am also with my friends, and so they are also in you. God's Spirit filling, moving in all spaces, every nook and cranny of this place and all places, and even in our lives. And so Jesus is praying for us as well as disciples, praying for all of us that are willing to grow, to change, to be impacted by this relationship with the divine. And we're called to carry on Jesus' mission to be God's living presence in this world. Now, I can make the argument that we already are, intentionally or unintentionally. And the question is, are we willing to do the work of letting this Christ presence continue to rise up within us? In verse 11, it calls us to remember that Jesus' name is placed upon us, that we are marked by this Jesus and because of this, we do have a sense of unity, even if we don't always live in unity. And in a world that is so divided, 
We are reminded, as the scriptures have said that we read, that we are not of the systems of this world. We are called to live differently, in unity, in love, in compassion, in connection. As you've heard me say before, the phrase I like from my friend Cormac Russell, it's better to be connected than correct. Amen? And if some of you are having a hard time with that phrase, we'll talk later. <laughs> Amen. There you go. It's better to be connected than correct. I know, though, that, in, again, in this world, we're not always one. And yet we yearn, don't we, to be in a place of oneness, to celebrate our diversity while also celebrating our oneness and our unity. So a few years back, the great Irish theologian, Bono, the lead singer of the band U2, wrote these words. One love, one blood, one life. You gotta do what you should, one life with each other. Sisters, brothers, one life. But we're not the same. We get to carry each other, carry each other, one life, one. We're not the same. We are created as beautifully diverse in thoughts, opinions, shapes, sizes, colors, preferences, etc. Yet we can still be one. We can live in unity as we are marked by a God who lives in perfect unity. Jesus is the word, the expression of God, if you will. And Jesus lived this out and calls us also to be an expression of the word. Calling us towards maturity and faith. Not grumbling, not gossiping, not complaining. And even when we do, to be able to hold it with one another in a way that's honoring. To move to the deeper stuff of understanding, of trust, of patience, of peace, self-control, rather than being others controlled. And to love. To carry each other. I have to carry you, and there will be a time when you have to carry me. Friends, here's what I want to say, too. Westwood First has demonstrated that to me. And you've demonstrated that to one another. You are living this, again, whether intentionally or unintentionally. And so our work is really just to call it out and to live further into it. And as we have said before, especially on this day of the Kirking of the Tartans, it's in our bulletin, one of the things that we are striving to be is a reflection of our neighborhood. We are a multicultural congregation one family of God, again, demonstrating, I think, what God's presence is about. And friends, folks in this community are noticing. I'm listening. I'm hearing a lot. So are others in our church. We want this place to be a place of diversity and unity and oneness as we love the neighborhood well. And it's happening here in Westwood. You know, one of the things I'm excited about, I'm excited that we're going to walk down to this brewery for all that want to come with us and walk down. Apparently District 3 is going to be here to help us walk down, District 3 police. That's fun. And that's great. But here's one of the great stories about that, to partner with a local business for the good of the community, for them to say, we're going to give 20% of our sales so you can do something good for the community. That's a great story. Can I get an amen on that from somebody? There, there you go. <laughs> Man, I am going back to my Baptist roots. <laughs> mm. We are committed to this course that we're on. We're committed to, to this time and place. We're moving towards a new story together, aren't we, Westwood First? Living in a new promise, rooted in the nature of Jesus, which is also our nature. The nature that God intended for us as the church and for his disciples. These last few verses in John, listen to this. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. 
then the world will know that you sent me and I have loved them as you have loved me. As Jesus is finishing this prayer and praying for his friends, praying for all of us, his prayer is for all of us in this room, even today. He wants us to be together, to be one. He gives us this great intimate picture of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one, and we as humanity are invited in that Trinitarian circle. It's beautiful. And as in that Trinitarian understanding, and my good friends in the Church of Scotland can, can articulate this even better, God is constantly emptying into God's self and also filling up God's self at the same time. And we are included in that filling, in that cycle of life. Jesus prays that desire, prays for our unity, prays for that sense of oneness, that we can have one heart. A few years ago, I was on a solo pilgrimage to Iona on the Western Hebrides of Scotland. It was a season of much... of much needed growth in my life. On the far side of that island, I was standing in this amazing wind, it was pushing me. And at that moment, I had a deep sense of being one with myself. And being one with nature around me. And one with the divine. It's the sense of my heart and God's heart and nature's heart beating together experiencing a deep sense of love that transcended time, space, and circumstance. One last story. When I was a kid in the 70s, a long time ago, my dad, who was way more of Welsh ancestry being a Jones than being Scottish, was a volunteer youth director at our church and I remember on the bus as a kid, hearing the youth group kids singing a song with this chorus. They'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Oh, friends, today is fun. Today is great. I, I love it. But hear this. We have a God who's closer than we could ever imagine residing within each one of us, calling us together in unity. God's spirit is with us, and that spirit will continue to unify us, regardless of our opinions, although they're fun to share, and you know about me, I've got quite a few of them, and so do you. And we'll share them in lots of love, as well as gift. But in that love, in that power of God's emptying God's self, that will bring us somewhere. Who knows where, but it'll be good. I think the world around us, our world, needs to see that love, needs to see our oneness, needs to see our radical hospitality and inclusivity of all people, regardless of nationality, skin color, orientation, age, whatever because we are all made of the one and diverse image of God. And yep, as I've said it before, and I think in a beautiful way, you're stuck with me forever, and that's a long time. And so we might as well trust God in getting on with letting God form our community, a community marked by grace and unity, a community known as a particular part of the body of Christ. And may we live into this prayer of Jesus of being one, just as he has demonstrated to us of being one with the Father and with us, with all of humanity. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, friends, as we respond to the word, we're going to do something a little bit different, and I'm going to call upon my liturgist to come back to the lectern. And we're going to do an affirmation of faith from the Scots Confession. A little thing about the Scots Confession. 
So when I was being ordained a long time ago in the PCUSA, we had to memorize like all these confessions, and then we had these exams on them. The Scotch Confession is a really interesting confession. You should read it sometime, and then we'll have a really good conversation, maybe down at the brewery, and we'll get really honest about some things. Okay. As we believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, so we firmly believe that from the beginning there has been, now is, and to the end of the world shall be one Kirk, that is to say one company and multitude of people chosen by God who rightly worship and embrace God by true faith in Jesus, who is the only head of the Kirk, even as it is the body and spouse of Christ Jesus. Jesus has empowered us with the Holy Spirit. We have life because of his presence with us. Let us join in God's abundance, giving what we can to offer peace to a hurting world.
Thanksgiving. God of the resurrection, help us use these gifts to offer hope where there is sorrow, peace where there is chaos, and love where there is fear. We can do incredible things because your spirit lives within us. Amen.
Well, thank you. And, and we're not done yet. Hey, friends, um, you'll notice in your bulletin, if there's all sorts of stuff that's going on in and around Westwood First Presbyterian and in the neighborhood, um, check it out. If you're curious about some of the things, I would love to hear what's on your heart and mind as we continue to rewrite the story of Westwood First Presbyterian. We are, as we've said around here, we're in a new chapter. And if you're curious about that chapter and, and where you can fit in, come talk to me. I'm always good for a free cup of coffee or something. So with that in mind, friends, as you leave this place, we are one. Yes, we have lots of different thoughts, lots of different opinions. That's what makes life interesting, right? And as we go through our days, as you go through our week, may we continue to nurture and cultivate that sense of oneness with our hearts, with the hearts of others, and with God's heart that resides everywhere in all places. Go in peace. Uh, well, actually, before you go in peace, as you recess out here, we're going to recess and then go to the right into the courtyard here, and, um, and then Caledonian Pipes and Drums are going to have another tune or two for us. And then, like I said, uh, District 3 is going to meet us, and uh, we'll walk down. And for anybody that wants to go, you can walk or you can drive. And again, a great community event uh, for us just to be together and to be with our neighbors here in Westwood. So now with that, may you know that Christ is in you and around you, above you, below you, beside you, living deeply within you. Go in peace. <laughs>